a technical difficulty with posting of the um, agenda. Um, it was not publicly posted online or made it into the town hall uh, posting. So we can take all the comments, all the applicants' presentation. We can't vote and we can't sign the documents um, or take any of that. What we're going to do is we have posted it Thursday at 7 o'clock. We are going to convene a meeting of the Conservation Commission basically to do the administrative side of whatever is presented here. So that's our way around not holding everybody up but still moving forward with um, the business that we need to do. So that being said, we have a new hearing for 45 South Main Street. Yep, it's here. I will read the notice okay. in the record. Under the Wetlands Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40 of Madison <coughs> Law is amended and the West Bridgewater Wetland Protection Bylaw Rules and Regulations. The Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing the 6th of October 2015 at 6.30 p.m. in the Town Hall Constitution, 65 North Main Street. <coughs> A notice of intent filed by Grady Consulting LLC on behalf, half, on behalf of Townhouse Holdings LLC for a septic repair with associated grading for a residential lot within 30 feet of the Town River at 45 South Main Street. So open. Good evening, everyone. Kevin Grady from Grady Consulting, uh, representing the applicant for the uh, notice of intent that was filed. Um, as stated, the project is primarily a septic system repair of a failed system. The wetlands uh, resource areas were delineated by John Zimmer, South River Environmental, um, a month or so ago. The resource areas consist of top of bank associated with the Town River, bordering vegetative wetlands, um, flood zone, base flood zone elevation 51, and riverfront zone. Um, the uh, DBW is in blue here, copper banks in green, riverfront in pink, underfoot buffer zone here in yellow. Uh, the entire site is covered with resource areas. Um, so we concentrated the <coughs> system repair as far from the resource areas as we could, which is in this front corner here. Uh, we're proposing a septic tank and leaching field with ADS biodiffusers. Um, in this location, the system meets the requirements of Title V. Um, we've been before the Board of Health and got the system approved. Um, the leaching field is located over 50 feet from the uh, wetlands, which is the Title V requirement. The site, um, the other portion of the construction project that we are proposing here is associated with the flood zone. We do need to bring in fill to um, install the septic system because of the elevation of groundwater. <coughs> so the system is slightly elevated. Therefore, we needed to bring in material to uh, raise the elevation. Um, so that impacts the flood storage capacity of the flood zone. We are proposing mitigating that with a compensatory storage area in the rear here. Um, the contours are in green, I believe, on your plans there. So we've calculated how much fill we're bringing in, and we are proposing to mitigate that with removing of existing soils in the back. Um, we're proposing silt sock erosion control around the perimeter of the project to mitigate any erosion towards the town river. Um, this building has been here 100 years, I think. Um, the site is pretty much completely um, grass and pavement. The existing tree line is over here. Um, we're not proposing to remove any vegetation other than working in lawn and replacing it in kind. Um, I've uh, laid out in my application to you how we meet the performance standards of um, all of the, the um, resource areas and I've also requested a few variances in the application that can Cite them specifically if you want, or if you just want to talk about the project, I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, green cards? Sure. John, anything from you? You've got your report. I don't know. 
a um, real tight spot. <laughs> yeah, it's a really uh, not much not much choices here. The I uh, just want to let everybody know that the flood elevation for this project is I think uh, 51. Is it? Yep, it's a it's and a transect line, right? Then there really isn't any part of this property that's mm -hmm. other than maybe the first floor of the house is above the flood. Uh, so everything, if there was a 100-year flood, just so the public knows, um, this is going to flood out. Um, but that's up to whoever owns it, not the commission, because he has compensated for the loss with his proposed compensatory storage area. So um, other than wanting to point that out, oh, a very, very uh, good presentation in the um, that you sent in you. with the explanation of how you've met the performance standards and um, I'm recommending approval of this project subject to your emergency meeting. Anybody in the audience have questions? Comments? Hearing none, I will <coughs> I think continue the hearing to the to Thursday. Yeah. Entertain a motion to continue to Thursday. I'll make a motion. You can't make any can't motion. Oh. We'll just continue to Thursday. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so you don't need us to attend any no. issues that come up. Just okay. Great. Thank Was you. there any uh, butters, maybe? Oh, yeah. Nope. No, no butters. So I would say that's going to be an approval. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. We okay. have 605 North Main Street. <coughs> I will read that one in. Under the Wetland Protection Act, Chapter 131, Section 40, is the best general law in the Wetland Protection Bylaws of West Bridgewater, Rules and Regulations. The West Bridgewater Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing since October 2015 in the Town Hall Conference Room, 65 North Main Street. For a notice of intent filed by College Engineering on behalf of Robert J. Carroll, Jr., to upgrade an existing septic system, relocate driveway, raise a one bedroom dwelling, in addition to a three-bedroom dwelling within the vicinity of a BBW at 605 North Main Street. And we're open. Alrighty. For the record, I'm Peter Lyons with Collins Engineering Group. Uh, as mentioned here for a um, notice of intent for a proposed septic system um, to be tied into a house, demolition of an existing house, and relocation of a driveway. Uh, basically had wetland line around the entire site. Very little of the property was out of the 50 foot. We were able to tuck our proposed leaching area right up in the front, just outside the 50 foot. Um, it's gonna be a pump system with a 1500 gallon tank to a 1000 gallon pump chamber. And as mentioned, the old house is to be um, taken down that's more towards the front of the lot where the existing system's going. No new vegetated areas to be disturbed. Everything's all, you know, previously established lawn. We do show work limits and erosion control around the entirety of the property, from house corner wrapping up to the street on both sides. Um, pretty straightforward project. Uh, questions? I have one. Um, sure. Did the Board of Health approve this yet? Yes, I have. Okay. Looking at re your report, John, there's nothing... Now, this is it. similar to the first one. Uh, there's just no other place to put it, and so there's really no option, all in existing uh, previously disturbed areas. Yep. Uh, so there will be a little grading done into the 50 foot buffer like the uh, previous one and so I'm recommending approval and granting the waiver. waiver. Anybody in the audience questions? 605? No. All right. Hearing none, we will take care of this on Thursday night. All right. Thank you.
We'll do number, <coughs> number three, lots 22 and 23. I received an email message from um, the applicant's engineer who is uh, who is asked for a continuous because they are going before the Board of Appeals and there will be for the site plan approval. And so there will be possibly modifications required by the zoning board. So they're asking for it to be continued sometime in November. So I picked um, November 17th, which is our second meeting in November. Is there anybody? Here for the audience for lots 22 and uh, 23 on Pleasant Street. Okay. We will take care of that on Thursday with <coughs> continuance. Uh, 265 East Center Street. They requested a continuance. And that is a continuation, so we will take care of that one. Is there anybody here for 265 East Center? Okay. 177 South Main Street. Scott Barry from Holmgren Engineering and uh, tonight's a continued hearing we've received your agents uh, comments and uh, made whatever changes were uh, requested and have uh, since then submitted the revised plan uh, back I believe September 28th so that's what's before you it's basically the same plan that was before you folks uh, previously the most significant change was just a change in the size of the of the drainage area. Uh, previously it was uh, about 50 by 50, now it's just uh, increased in size uh, to uh, accommodate the higher groundwater that was encountered out on the site. Uh, as I said, the other issues that were brought up on the plan were uh, details and, and uh, things like that that were added to the plan. So I don't really think there's anything else major, Mr. Chairman. John? Uh, I wasn't here at the last meeting, but I think I noted in my report, I went out to the site and dug a test pit with a, a tile spade, didn't have to have a bobcat or excavator, and found water at 16 inches below the surface, and that was in an area that was proposed to be the leaching or uh, storage system for the stormwater, so it wasn't back near the wetland, it was back in where the parking lot's gonna go. Mm -hmm. So I informed the engineer's office about that, and they uh, wrote, uh, took the system and raised it above the water table so that there would be an unsaturated zone below it. And in order to do that, they had to um, increase the footprint because if you lose the height, you gotta spread it out even more. So they were able to accomplish that. Um, and so now there's an emergency overflow that will um, allow the water that is in excess of what they can store in there for uh, multiple 100 year type storms or day after day of rainfall. And um, it will discharge it to the wetland, but it's in excess of what is required to be contained, so there's no way to account for that other than letting it go out instead of uh, creating an issue um, in the lot itself. The uh, other details I asked for was um, some structural uh, designs of the interlocking block retaining wall, which will be along the property line. Uh, in addition to that, I felt that the dimensions of the septic tank were 
uh, not appropriate for a 12 inch pipe that was going to be put into it for removing the grits and solids that will be carried uh, with the storm water. So they adjusted that. Uh, there was um, a little bit of housekeeping with uh, the title of one of the uh, details for the Cape Cod berm and a couple other minor things. So all in all, oh, um, one of the major things I asked for was to have uh, a notation on it that the, the grading on the north and the grading on the south will be such as to bring the um, any excess runoff from the parking lots or from the lawn area on the south where the septic system is going to be, uh, instead of letting it run on to the neighbors, that it would take it down along the property line and put it back into the wetlands at the, at the far back of the lot. And I think um, my review indicates that I had a problem with this most recent plan where the outlet pipe was directed in a um, northwesterly direction towards the abutter. We um, can't read it from here. Yeah, it's actually, I'll show you. That's next sheet, I think. Yeah. Yeah, the, the outlet pipe is directed so that the flow is headed towards the abutter on the north side. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to see you do is, it's fine leaving it that way, but I need a swale from there down towards the wetland. Okay. And I s suggest you to stop it at 97. Sure. Okay. And what I figure they can do is um, make that minor change on, on the plan before I let them take the order of conditions, which would be their permit, and sure. that way we're assured to getting the, the change made, and it's not directing it towards the abutter on the north. It's directing it to the back of the lot where it belongs. Right, that makes sense. And other than that, I'm suggesting uh, an approval, closing the hearing on Thursday, and, um, and making an approved plan for their permit. Anybody have any questions, comments for 177 South Main Street? Yes. We're here, this whole front row, because we're abutters to what's going on here. Um, again, not that the last meeting before, uh, our greatest concern is what, what's going to happen at the runoff. Yep. Because we all have, we get one of those big heavy storms, we all have lakes in our backyard. So we're a little bit concerned about, now that you're taking up the footprint of all the grass that's going to absorb all this, mm -hmm. where the water's going to go. Now you, said you had increased your drainage pit. Right. It was 50 by 50, now it's larger. Right. How much larger is it than it was before? Now it's 59 by 70. 59 by 70? Mm -hmm. And that will sustain what you people consider a 100 year storm? Right, it's designed right. For, the, for the additional runoff, right? Okay. And then, as Mr. Delano just said, there's an outlet uh, for the system that goes here and we'll build a swale so any uh, any overflow will be directed into the wetland directly on our lot and not shed on the, the property to the north specifically. It'll go towards the north? It, no, it'll go right right to the back, to, okay. to the wetland in the back. Yep. Right. All right. So that hopefully it won't be shedding off either side, it will all right. be directed to the back or right into the ground. Well, you say hopefully, and if it does, well, I mean, it, it's, it's designed <laughs> to do this, and if the engineering is done right. What is, we're looking for, I don't want to say so much a guarantee, but a warranty if it, something does happen, and all that water now that you've done that comes our way, what do we do? Well, what do we see? I, I can address that. All right. they, what they've done is they've mm -hmm. met the requirement that DEP, the state, um, requires for stormwater management and that's a 100-year storm, and that's a, a, a volume of water that occurs um, um, supposedly once in 100 years. But we found that um, lately, if you have a whole week of rain where it's not a 100-year storm, each rainstorm, but you just have day after day of rain. Um, like the Carolinas are going through. Exactly, and there's no way to predict that. Sure, so, that's understandable. Um, they are designing it to the standard 
And that's going to assure the commission, the town, and the abutters that they've done um, the maximum that's required. And these extraordinary things that uh, can ne never be predicted could happen. So th there's no one that can say we guarantee that you're not going to get it because South Carolina is a good example of something mm -hmm. that they say is a thousand years yeah, storm. Right. And uh, I, we could get one, but let's hope we never do. Right, right. Uh, you said you dug a test pit. What, what day did you do that? Do you know? Uh, I think I put it in my previous report. It might be. <coughs> did you have my previous one? I might have it. Say I can't tell you. For I mean, I can tell you for sure, but um, it was probably the week before I went on vacation, and I went on the fifteenth of September. So okay, that's the five days. Probably yes. Okay. Um, prior to that, we've had no rain in I didn't use a long any, time. Correct. Yeah, I didn't use any um, wetness as an indicator. Um, the method that is now used, rather than seeing a direct observation of wetness or water. Uh, you look for what we call hybrid soils, which are um, soils that have lost its natural color due to the fact that it's so saturated for long periods of time that the mineral, natural mineral color in the soil is depleted by uh, dissolving with uh, the water that sits in it for a long period. So short periods of time will not dissolve those colors out, but long periods of saturation will dissolve them out. And then when the water uh, does subside, the natural oxygen that comes down through the roots and that just comes through the soil pores becomes uh, like an oxide, uh, a rust. And so you get um, these concentrations of rust colors, and then you get concentrations of depleted colors and they're called uh, soil redoxymorphic uh, colors. Um, a lot of people call it modeling of soil, rust stains, those types, types of, of uh, titles for that, that kind of situation. So I use that in not any, I did not find any water. So I, I looked for purely the first sign of any of those redoxymorphic colors and use that elevation that was 16 inches. So you did not find water itself? No. Okay. No. Okay. And, it, and as it turns out, the elevation 16 inches below that spot that, that I took the observation in correlates with the elevation at the wetland flags that are at the back of the uh, at the edge of the woods, you'd say. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's a pretty good correlation that there's it's oftentimes maybe an inch or two of standing water in the back there. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're, we're really close to it with that figure. Okay. Who's the contractor? Uh, you haven't got one yet? No, I don't believe there's one yet. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have anything? If not, we will put this for Thursday. Yep. I, I just will just add that um, one of the conditions of approval is that the um, proponent, the owner of the property, will have to have an as-built uh, plan prepared, which means that after the construction is completed, the engineer will come back out. They will shoot elevations on all of the drainage structures, uh, locate all the the points along the property lines, etc., and then certify to the commission that it was built in accordance with their original design. If it's not, the commission will not issue a certificate. And what that means is that any future uh, financing, <coughs> refinancing for a piece of property will not go through because 
there's no certificate. And a, and a uh, lending institution uh, really shies, especially with uh, commercial property, shies away from uh, lending any additional money until that certificate is in their hand. And uh, we're not going to let it go if it's not correct, according to the design. Okay, if there's nothing else, we'll move this to Thursday night. Okay, great. Thank you. What time would that be for Seven. Seven o'clock. Number six is the administrative discussion for a request for a certificate of compliance. Um, right, but we can at least let people know what Thursday night will have on the agenda. 117 Prospect Street um, was a septic repair for a single family house, um, and it was issued, the uh, order was issued in 2006, and it's been. Um, done for all these years and we discovered that it had an outstanding uh, order of conditions without a certificate. So uh, I'm recommending that you issue a certificate without a bond. Okay. And we can deal with that on Thursday night as well. I think we're close to we have item number seven, which is our button violation discussion. Which again, we can't make any decisions, but I believe <laughs> you just stepped out. <laughs> I cleared the room, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> they should sit up close. Everybody, I think, um, I think he's meeting Michelle. That's fine. Okay, the um, uh, while they're doing that, you want to do number eight? Sure, informational. Actually, um, I think I'll defer to Steve. Okay. When John and I had the uh, okay, opportunity to do uh, a scavenger hunt for the elementary school over at Roselle McDonald for the first, second, and third grade uh, classes. Uh, we had the uh, preliminary one on October 5th, Monday. Uh, the kids were like unreal. <laughs> they were so excited to go, you know, be able to get this piece of paper, a pencil, right? put their name on it, and go out and try to find these, uh, like a fern, uh, two different types of leaves, uh, you know, a water source, uh, a, a, a deciduous tree, uh, a conifer tree, a, you know, a yeah. tree. Oh wow! Uh, they, they were really excited, and they, they, they of course, uh, several of the students were asking questions. Where do I find a pine tree? <laughs> and I said, sort of look over on that side of the school, you know, it's lined with pine trees, extremely large ones. And they were very appreciative. Good. Were they in the vertical? No, we kept them out of that because they're a little too was, young. For yeah. It could have been rather dry <laughs> considering yeah. the weather we yeah. And it was dry. Yeah. Um, sure. Bone dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, we're, we're going back on Thursday to finish up the uh, with the other classes. We did two first grade classes on Monday, two second grade classes on Monday, two third grade classes on Monday. So Thursday we have two, two, and two to continue. So, but you should see they were so excited. That's and, cool. and, you know, I found them all. I found them all. <laughs> and the, you know they they were like. The girls were all together in little groups, walking around, <laughs> and they were like trying to find a bug on the ground. You know, it was really cute. We had a, um, it was a tic-tac-toe type of layout. So yep. we had in the um, middle um, a wild card. And we got quite a few questions on, what's a wild card? <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that was fun. And then, um, as I said in my report, that um, one of the open space and recreation committee members is also a substitute teacher. And she's heard from one of the parents that her son came home so excited to tell the story about what he'd done at recess, where most of the time they go out and they play. Right, and they just run around and, <laughs> and get rid of energy. So you directed their energy. Yep. 
Yeah. Good. I'm sure the school liked it because you didn't interrupt quote unquote their class time, but yeah, they still. It, by the way, we made it voluntary. It wasn't mandatory. The kids yeah. had the option of doing recess or doing the, the you know, scavenger, scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. And there were a few kids who um, came over partway through and said, "Can we do this?" Because <laughs> apparently they had thought they weren't going to do it, and then when they saw how fun it was for the others, they jumped right in. So I, I loved it. I thought it was uh, really great to see the the enthusiasm they had. Yeah, in fact, we I think the uh, principal, Mrs. Goulet, yeah. who is the new principal, was very pleased with the results. She, mm -hmm. she was, uh, you know, amazed that the kids were so fascinated with doing something of that nature. So it's a stepping stone, no pun intended, <laughs> um, to maybe some uh, future classroom work for it, the more, uh, the higher grades, yep. where they're getting a little bit older, doing some actual uh, studying of specific environmental type things, then we can go in and Maybe they'll be just as excited then. Yeah. Great. Well, good job. Thank classroom. you. That is, and that's the perfect spot for over there. Yeah. Yeah. You get everything over there. It's awesome. Yeah. Good. Well, you got them in early. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then we'll go back to item seven. One, one, one more thing. It seems as if the, um, the people who assist the teaching staff over there have pretty good control over their students. Just yes. it's you take um, a quiet area, the doors open up, the kids are energetic, enthusiastic, and quite loud, <laughs> and it goes on and on for a while, and then all of a sudden it stops almost to, uh, uh, almost silence, and then that's because uh, they're getting them back ready to go into the classroom, and they want everything calm down and it's amazing to see how um, how well the, they respond to the teachers and the assistants yeah. that are out there. Yeah, and one more thing, the one class actually turned around and said, thank you. Oh, oh wow, that's, that's nice. great. That really yeah. is. That's so we're going to do it again and hopefully we'll have a good report. And Thursday should be a nice day. Oh, well. It's a nice day. Yeah. Great. And thank you, Steve. You organized and did a great job. Mm -hmm. yeah. Piece of cake. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, That's really. <laughs> she had a question. Yes. Would you be moving to the Howard with that? <laughs> For those kids that missed it because this is your first year. <laughs> <laughs> She's very interested in that. Well, you should bring her up again. <laughs> 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 the Howard School. Yeah, well, let's see my daughter, gra my granddaughter goes to the Howard <laughs> School. There's the foot in the door. She just went over from the uh, Rose McDonald to the Howard, so. Uh, yeah, we, we could do something. I'll, I'll see what we can do. There you go. I'll have to contact Dr. Oakley and go through the normal channels, the uh, same channels I did before, and see what we can do. Yep. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're, You're welcome. welcome. There you you now you can say you can tell all your <laughs> classmates, hopefully you're one of them that got this to happen. She's actually on the student council. Uh -huh. <laughs> You'll have to get her name and have her coach him. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, back to our wetland violation then. <laughs> I see you're back. And <laughs> John's back. And yeah. come on up. We're <laughs> this is informal. We're not going to make any decision tonight because we can't, but... Um, Unfortunately, Michelle, our botanist is not here. I don't know if John made you aware, but we did hire somebody to test. Yep. Okay. I did make some copies of the findings. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. science. Um, as you can see, Michelle had found the wetlands to begin quite a bit off of our property. Um, 
and in turn, our 50 foot buffer would, would, move, would move back. We've come to do a lot of research. I've, I've spoken with John quite a bit. Um, when I brought this to John, he had mentioned that another issue was a conservation easement that I have not been able to find. Well, we've done research too. <laughs> yes, I out. didn't want to speak on, on John's side of it, yeah. but I have not been able to find it, and a couple other of the um, homeowners have not been able to find it. We found that the developer did not do his job properly. And it was not recorded properly, and therefore it's not on all the pieces of the property that it should have been. We've made the developer aware of that. He has another project coming in. It will not be looked at as favorable, possibly, as the last project he did. Um, so on our side, in which I would propose to John, is we would be willing to rewrite those easements. That whatever is the 50-foot buffer, we would write as a conservation easement. And then whatever was left after we would be able to put a pool I understand like um, open space or green space, you can't have a permanent structure, but you can have a lawn and, and stuff like that. We would be willing to give all of that as open space other than where we put our pool and, and shed. That's a... Well, I know you haven't taken a look at this yet, John. No, no I haven't. Um, I need Michelle's field reports and, and forms to be able to go out uh, and check the line. And the reason for that is uh, each of the commission has a copy. You'll see the uh, first line is the black line. That's the original one that everything was written in accordance. Uh, the plans were prepared with a conservation easement on it. And the conservation easement was run along the, pretty much in straight lines along the 50 foot buffer. So now on your plans, the blue line is the one that Michelle Grenier, a botanist, um, had recently done. And I just want to mention that this lot has received a certificate of compliance. As a matter of fact, all of the ones up there that were involved with the conservation have received their certificate of compliance. So the commission can entertain now that that's closed, let's say, we call it closed. Um, you can open it up with a new wetland line. Um, and each and every one of the landowners who have conservation land on their property can do the same thing that the Ellis's are doing. They can hire a botanist. They can hire an engineer to locate the flags. They have to get the Conservation Commission to approve it through a filing, and once it's been approved, then they can propose work inside that restricted area that's been previously shown on their plan, and new documents can be written to uh, assure that protection. So if in the end result of all of this, the commission decides that um, the Ellis's can do something farther back from the conservation easement that was originally recorded on the plans or shown on the plans and they can go farther back each and every one of the other lot owners can do the same thing provided they go through the process uh, they may elect to just say no we'll leave it the way it is and that's fine and if they decide they want to do something such as the Ellis's want to do they again, would have to go through the process, just not maybe the same way that Mr. Ellis started this, but, um, <laughs> you know, contact the commission, see what needs to be done, and then move forward from that. Um, so I can't make a, a recommendation to you tonight as to whether that line's accurate or not. Um, I will get out there between now and your next meeting and uh, take a look at it. And if it it's reasonable. Uh, I would recommend approval. If it's not reasonable, we should get the botanist in to discuss it with me to find out where we have differences, maybe adjust the locations, and then replot them. 
uh, and a lot of times you can do that right in the field instead of having the engineer come back out. Um, if there's no agreement and um, the review looks as if the original line is, my review looks as if the original line was more accurate, then if we can't have a meeting of the minds, then a third party might have to be involved. But I don't know if it's going to have to get to that point. I, you know, I really have to get to the site to look at it. Either way, though, for us to declare a new line, there will have to be a filing. Right. Okay. Yeah. And actually, um, Michelle had originally contacted me by phone saying that she wanted to start that process, and I recommended that maybe she just hold off a little bit until we got more information, and now we're getting it, so I think it's becoming clearer and clearer which direction we need to head in. I mean, considering the original wetland line that we were looking at was done relatively recently, um, that's a big discrepancy. When we, we don't see them this big, um, so it'll be worth taking a, a look at it. And well, Mr. Ellis had brought up a, a, an interesting um, observation, and, and it's yet to be determined if it's um, true or not. But. LEC originally flagged for the old uh, project that was proposed here before the, this more recent one. So if they really didn't do any additional flagging, then there could be some differences. And I believe that was about 10 or 12 years ago. Definitely worth taking a look at. Yeah. So I think you know, it needs to be looked at, but uh, at this point, the the um, attitude that a commission would normally have about a wetland violation probably should just be kept on hold for a, a, a while until we find out exactly what uh, all the facts are on this. All right, so we'll wait until John meets. Michelle was supposed to be here tonight. I, she's going to be driving. She had one of these in Halifax. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's tough to be in multiple places, so we understand. Yeah. Um, but John can connect with her and you and figure out a time to take a look at it and then... And then obviously, uh, if it was the 50-foot buffer, the red little tree line down by the new line going all the way, that was my clearing line. Uh, so whatever would be into that 50-foot buffer, we would obviously restore. And so the red squiggly line on his yeah, top is, what is was where the that's the clear path is clear too. So we'd have to talk about that too, you yeah. know, and what what he needs to do. But um, I think that's workable. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't have known. You didn't know. So I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I know quite a bit now. I, I'm <laughs> telling you, she's. I there wasn't a recorded doing research. <laughs> I've talked to John numerous times over it, and so. As a fellow resident on Pearl Road, who happens to be for the 177 project, we're glad Ken's finding out the hard way, so we all didn't. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get there. I'm sure You'll the Fox his brothers his aren't going to be happy with me, but. <laughs> You'll get his bill later. <laughs> <laughs> my, my bill keeps going up for this stuff. All right. So, okay. Okay, we'll be in touch, and yeah, we'll. Hopefully move through this fairly quick. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you seem like you have a question, so why don't you come out with it? Um, how do I get in touch? Do we finally make something official, or are we going to wait until you go out and you speak with yeah. Michelle? Yeah. And um, I will be most likely out there next week because okay. the rest of this week is already booked. But um, get me Michelle's information uh, through electronic filing if you can to my email address you have it so uh, she can do the same thing you give it to her she can get it to me directly through email and then I'll come out next week and check it and then our next meeting is um, the 20th yep. yes uh, so that it will be on the agenda again for the 20th and probably at that point we'll have more information know, know a lot more about it then be able to give us some direct Directed some how to handle it. Okay, sounds great.
Awesome. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Good night. Thanks for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. See you Thursday. <laughs> I'm going to throw that one back in. John, I don't think we have anything else on our agenda. Our, our list of things to deal with. It's, it's not an agenda. It's, it's a, a, a list of... <laughs> um, hearing none, we'll entertain a motion. Can't. No just have to get a motion up to and leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. We can't vote, so we just yeah. Yeah. get up and leave. Get up we and just, leave. That's it. We're done for tonight. <laughs> That's right. Um, so you're done? Yep, yeah. we're done. have a quorum. Mm -hmm. I will call the About seven o'clock. <laughs> <Seven, seven laughs> the, the meeting, the continued meeting for the Conservation Commission open. And all we have to do is take make motions and vote and sign some documents to complete what we did the other night. Right. So under the public hearing for 45 South Main Street, I will entertain a motion to issue a standard order of conditions. I'll make the motion. I'll second. So we have to write that down for Kitty too, right? She I've got it. Okay. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. I will need a motion to grant a waiver for work within the 50 feet. I'll make the motion. And I'll second. Moved and seconded. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And a motion to close the hearing. I'll make that motion. Oh, made the motion. Do I have a second? Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't want to. <laughs> moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. All right. Oh, that way, this one. Oh. Oh, did you pay? Okay. I will. <laughs> <laughs> My That's okay. And the next one we have is for 605 North Main Street. That was a septic repair. And I will need a motion to issue a standard order of conditions. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will need a motion to grant a 50-foot waiver. I'll make the motion. Moved and seconded. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. In a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Seventy-seven South Main Street. That was for demolition of a dwelling and putting a new dwelling drainage and septic. And for that, I will need a motion to issue a standard order of conditions with PVC pipe and signage required. I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. Move and second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I will need a motion to grave grant a waiver for work within the fifty foot. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. And I will entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. And the last one is a request for a certificate of compliance for 117 Prospect Street. And that was a single family home with Oops. septic upgrade. Um, and for that, all we need is a motion to issue a certificate of compliance without a bond. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Move and second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved.
And having no other business before us to do tonight, I will entertain a motion to close our hearing. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. Move and second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Yay. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming out. I appreciate it.